Welcome, Margareta Berg. Uh, could we begin by you presenting yourself? Thank you. Uh, I'm an orthopedic surgeon and I have a PhD. And um, I have been interested in the question of surgical training and surgical skills training for 30, 40 years, all my surgical life. I've been thinking a lot about how we do, how do we form a new surgeon from a, a novice. You also initiated the first Surgicon Congress. Can you describe the background to that? Um, I called a, a lot of colleagues over the world and asked them um, if they also thought about this question, if it was an issue for them. And I made a literature search to look for um, science and data. And I found out that there was, at that time it wasn't so many articles written about uh, surgical training. It was about 100 references. And I uh, called also the authors. And in the end we met up in uh, Dublin, in, on Ireland and uh, sat down for two days and had, had a brainstorming discussion, very open. And uh, after that discussion, I went home to Gothenburg and had a green light to organize a congress on surgical skills training. So we did that first time in 2011. And what was the people's reaction to the first two congresses? Um, we were surprised because there were coming people from 30 countries on six different continents. There came an entire delegation from Australia and New Zealand, from Iraq, and um, it, was, it was very well received. And we, were, we got so many quality points afterwards in the inquiry that we made. And people seemed to be very happy to, to finally li lift those questions, because I think many people think about it, but there's nobody taking care of this topic in an from an overview, from a general view. Um, there are studies about uh, how to be a very good uh, laparoscopic surgeon or how to do um, cholecystectomies by laparoscopy. It was the first articles published um, about VR training and um, um, not so many articles and literature about general principles for what I call driving licenses for surgery. Why are those questions so important? To me, you, when you start in surgery, you can feel a little bit lost. And I think also the experienced surgeons, they are by definition teachers, but it is not always that they shoulder their teaching role and uh, they are aware how important their behavior is to the new uh, person coming in. And I think that both parts could benefit from uh, simple guidelines and rules that is um, uh, grounded on evidence and data to help them in the situation where an experienced surgeon should transfer his manual skills to somebody else. Because it is a kind of a, an intellectual challenge when you think about it. It's not only a technical question. It is, you have to think about how could we do that without hurting anybody or to do it safely. Are there any particular sessions that you're looking forward to, especially uh, this yeah. year? Uh, I'm very interested in session number four because it's dealing with international uh, certificates or driver's licenses for surgeons, as there are not any such uh, licenses today. And we will have very interesting lecturers there. We have Dennis Mukwege, who is the Nobel Peace Prize laureate from 2018, who is working with the gynecology in Congo Kinshasa. And we also have one person that I'm very interested in listening to, Dr. Peter Linz, who is responsible for doctors that are applying to, to work for his organization called Mercy Ships where they, as he say, uh, in the absence of international licenses, they have invented some kind of, uh, of procedure or internal routine certificate to be filled in before they are allowed to work on those ships. And uh, they are working in poor countries to help, and they have operating theaters and um, doctor services on those ships. 
But I'm interested in how they have solved the problem in the absence of, of international guidelines or rules. And um, the other session that I'm, I'm very interested in, is, it's session number seven, about how do we make the exchange between the device industry and, and uh, the uh, public hospitals. Because new devices are uh, developed and sold, and surgeons are often trained by the industry. And then they use the equipment in the operating room. But I don't know where the borderline is between the responsibility from the industry and the responsibility from the hospital. When you use the equipment and you are trained by the industry, is the industry responsible if something goes wrong? Or is it suddenly the hospital's responsibility and who at the hospital is responsible? This is kind of, of a fine legal aspects, but I'm quite interested in such questions. And I think that uh, device industry and surgeons are forever married because they cannot live without each other. But it is a complicated relation at the same time. As a way of concluding, uh, could you give a couple of reasons why people should show up at the conference? I think that um, no matter what kind of specialty you are training in or you are exercising your profession in, there is something that you can pick out that you can take home and use afterwards. I think you get knowledge by the lectures and the open discussions with the panels that are that I have a content I think I have seen this before in 2011 and 2013 uh, I have a content that is practically applicable at home uh, I think that's the, the, the greatest value and that you give some inspiration to make new scientific studies in this field of surgical training thank you Margareta thank you <laughs>